Thank you. Okay, so you have in this jury the co-founder Usama Amar. I don't introduce him to you because you already know. And also Baltazar, who is a partner at the family. And both of them are really focused on strategy. And I'm more on uh, what we could call <laughs> the swag. All right, so we're going to start with... Ah, what I didn't tell you is that, of course, the winner <laughs> of the pitch tonight will get a free immatriculation of incorporation of his company with Guacamole. Guacamole that you will meet tonight, who will be pitching the product you already met. Okay, let's start. Give a round of applause to Menu Next Door. Hi everyone. Uh, first of all, I have some questions for you. The first one is, who in this room is uh, loved to eat at least three times per day? At least, or maybe one time already. Okay, me maybe more. Yes. Okay, the second question is, who on this, in this room loves to cook for their neighbors, for their friends, for their families? Okay, we have around 20% of, of the room. Uh, I have a great news for, uh, for you. Uh, I just find 20 people ready to cook for all those hungry people in the, in, in the room. Uh, do you think it's a great idea? We think it is, because we launched it already in Brussels six months ago, and um, we have today more than 350 chefs who cook in Brussels, okay? And that was the first chef, Catherine, who is right there in the public. And I'm very happy that she's here today because she's a very good friend and she followed the story until today, until the end. So the first menu that we, we made, we, we've been to a farm to buy some food, fresh food, healthy food, and it was a great day, you know. I just launched a group on Facebook in Brussels six months ago. I had 30 people on the group, only friends, and they follow all the journey. So, sorry. We start to cook uh, quiche, spinach, and, 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 and cheese. And at the end of the day, we say to people, OK, guys, all my friends were following the group and say, and I say, OK, you can have this for five euros. Who wants some? And at the end of the, of the day, we, s we sold more than 30 menu menus. And then the week after, we had two chefs. And the week after that, four chefs that are, are passio passionate about cooking. And uh, today, we are very happy to be in, in Paris. And uh, for that, we, we think that we have to find a great chef who are passionate about, about, um, about cooking. And I think you know that guy. And he will be the first chef, and I will let him talk. Uh, he will be the first chef in Paris. He shares already all his passion about entrepreneur. And that's that guy. Oh, no. That's all the friends of that guy. That's that guy. <laughs> Do you know him? And I will let him talk because his first menu is on Friday. So be ready for this because it's going to be awesome and will explain us what he's going to cook for, for everyone. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I have some trouble of revenue at the family, so I'm forced to cook on Friday. Uh, we will have a quinoa, a truffle quinoa as a starter. And then uh, a bœuf bourguignon. I, I have no idea of how we say that in English. And we will end with a very sweet compote. And all of that will be for the exceptional price of 13 euro. And you are all welcome to order. Thank you, Sama. <laughs> so the idea is you go at your neighbor and you make a takeaway with an amazing menu, homemade, without any chemical product, only made by, by love. And anyone here who loves cooking can do it. And today is the reality in Paris, and we are very happy to have uh, Usama. So I have something to ask to you. If you want, because he will make like 50 menus on Friday. So if you want to have five of those menus for free, you just have to go to Menu Next Door Paris on the group on Facebook and add as much people as you can. And the five people who add uh, most people will win those five menus. So just come back to me after that and tell me how, how many people you add on the group. And you can have those five menus. And you will come in the house of Usama and see all his intimacy. So, 
don't say that. Don't make pictures. So I have a challenge for you. Add people, take your time. We are, we are already 7,000 people on the group in Paris, and we launched the group 20 minutes ago. So enjoy. One, two, one, two. <coughs> Take your mic. It was a great pitch. Thank you very much. We already know you. Yes. We follow you for, since Brussels. And uh, I have to say and to admit that we love what they cook. It's delicious. Um, so the question here is that you, you really use, and that's cool to use uh, Pitch Don't Kill My Vibe to actually um, launch something, to do something, and not only to present uh, something. So here you ask the people to be active and that's cool, that's good. The only thing that I was missing and maybe the crowd was missing is the little stories behind all these chefs that you've met step by step. I know you because you started on coup d'etat. That's such a, like an honor to have a guy starting on coup d'etat, starting a startup and, and applying every little rules. Uh, but Anyway, so tell me about these rules. Tell me the discoveries that you've made because this didn't happen uh, in one day. How did you, in six months? Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, it was pretty simple. It started with with Catherine, a friend of mine, and then the other one was another friend, and then it was a friend of the friend, and I'd start to meet everyone. So I know around 300 chefs in Brussels. I know them personally, and I know exactly what they cook, what they love. And thanks to that, I, I could be able to understand exactly what the, the issues they have. Uh, and I, c I could iterate uh, in every um, features that I build to make it more easier for them. Mm. And uh, the thing is, today we have more than 300 chefs, and um, we made we make party uh, ev every week. Uh, we, we, we did a, a new, new Year's Eve. We had more than 300 people coming at the New Year's Eve. Okay, but when you started, I yes. mean, I, I saw an amazing picture. Yes. Uh, if you can go back, you said this was our first plate. I mean, it looks the, the first plate. This yes. is this is it really the first picture that you take? That's the first one with my iPhone, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, it doesn't look like a start of, uh, an iPhone picture. Yeah. I mean, you're really humble, and that would be may maybe it's a quality and a default. On a pitch like that, you know, you have some, some good tests. Mm -hmm. Like this picture on Facebook, you started with the Facebook group, you grow on the Facebook group because also of this. Yes. Did you use it? Did you leverage it? I mean, how did, did you, do you explain the relationship between the, the picture <laughs> and, the, and the success of the menus? Yeah, because I, I, I try to, to, to make some, you know, um, to make some great picture, but before the menu, the thing that is important is the people who interact between each other. So we try to to show that that the we had really great connection with people. So I, I did this picture with my my iPhone, and 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 then uh, it was very important to have great uh, picture of food. But I iterate on this, so I made like more than fifteen thousand picture with my iPhone until I get how it works exactly to. 15,000, yeah. To, to I, I start to understand how to, to make people hungry for the power. I also knew you know you pretty well. Uh, to me, it's good the way you pitch because you put people in the action and in the experience they're actually going to live uh, when they order on Menu Next Door. And I find it nice that you also relate pretty well to the difficulties in the business that you found, or not that you found, but like you know that now you need clients because you already have the chefs and you know that if they go and like it and if they're already chefs, they're gonna become chefs and call you. Um, and it's for everyone, it's really good to see entrepreneurs uh, not stick to the solution problem team. Uh, he, he didn't tell you how many people are in the team, but you still might be interested in what he does in the end. Uh, that's the only goal of the pitch. Uh, when you have five minutes, you just want people to be really interested in what you do. Uh, and if it's because the team is amazing, then tell, talk about the team. If it's not because of the team, he is amazing and you're gonna remember that, but it's because what he explained is great. So that's the only goal you need. Um, then also a really good, uh, good thing to do is to ask for what you need. So today he needs as many people joining the group uh, so that the first chefs are gonna make good money and a good uh, share their passion about food. Uh, 
you should all do this. Tell what you need at the end of a pitch, especially the, in front of an audience like this. Uh, either it's money, uh, people joining you, uh, chefs cooking, or people joining a group. Uh, it's a good thing to do. Um, and then on the attitude, you really uh, share the passion you have for the project, and, and you make us feel that you're really creating this community of chefs uh, that actually really enjoy um, cooking and selling through Manning Dexo. Uh, just a question. Uh, so you go to each chef to test the food? Uh, the f yeah, for the first the first four months, I was in every every chef's house. So it's why you can see at the, the first picture, it's me. It's really me. I mean, I know I have 10, 10 kilos more, but it's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's I. I, I you yeah, get fat? Sure. Yeah, for sure. I <laughs> eat every day for five, ten times. So okay. yeah, yeah, it's a reality. <laughs> and now, how do you do if you cannot? Uh uh, now we understand that we we are not that sub uh, objective to say if it's good or not. I think the community is enough um, enough to say if it's good or not. So we let the community saying if they let rating today. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. I, Great for the pitch, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, we love you, and we are Me amazed too. by what you are doing. Uh, I just want to tell a little story on your behalf. Uh, how old are you in terms of... When did you launch Money Next Door? Uh, six months, seven months ago. Okay, when did you incorporate your company? Uh, one month and a half ago. Okay, how much money do you make by plate? Uh, me? Yeah. Us? Yeah. Zero. Zero. So you see, like, we see that at the family every day, every time. You have people that come and because they like to play about building a company, the first thing they do is that they incorporate a company, they build a business model that don't sell, they take commission that don't exist, they think about everything that is totally artificial and they don't have any sing single client. In his case, what amazed us from D1 is that he sold more than 10,000 or 20,000 uh, food to people and he didn't f a week and he did not think about what can be the commission or not. And now it's an obvious model because when you think about Menu Next Door, you can tell yourself, oh, they will put a commission on every sale and they will make X, Y, Z. And it's real, it's not artificial. It's much better to focus on very important things and I think one of the mistakes we see all day long with Alice and Balthazar is that, and every partner at the family, is that people don't focus on what matters. And Menu Next Door's success in Brussels is really about focusing only on what really matters. People eating good food, sharing great experience. And just another, a last example of that, how long it, did it take you to make a website? Uh, Three months? Three months. During three months, it was only a Facebook group doing every single interaction in Facebook. So really, if you can only learn one thing tonight, is about this incredible example, and it shows that execution is everything. It's not about your dreams. It's not about you playing entrepreneurs. It's really about providing value to customers, and I think that's very important. Thank you. I'm not, I mean... Does anyone has any question in the room? You can take it. Okay. Okay. So she wants more details okay. on the, deli the how it works. Uh, okay. So actually, for the launching here in Paris, uh, for two weeks, it's going to be only a Facebook group. Okay. So, uh, for example, I will take the example of Usama. So we will cook at home on Friday. Okay. But the day before, we will make a post at five. PM, so be there, and you can order saying two menus for me at seven, for example. Okay, Usama will like your post, which means that in he, he accept your order. Okay, and the day after you go and you pick up at, at his home, and he will s and you will stay five, ten, fifteen minutes with him talking about food and, and in my kitchen. It's in your kitchen, it's very important. You see the kitchen chef. That's one of the things I love most about about menu next door that he solve every uh, problems about getting to a stranger and getting food. You just look at the kitchen, and if it's clean, you take it. If it's not clean, you can just leave. It's one of the best Asian selection ever. 
exactly. So it, how it works for the first two weeks, and then we open the website, the first uh, February, and it's going to be a website with all the menus of around you in, in Paris, and we're going to start around the 10th ar arrondissement, 11th, etc. Last picture, <laughs> last, la last uh, question. Uh, a second menu, this, it's one for free. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Another one who wants to eat, um, Usama, uh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Catherine. I know it's a surprise. Well, no, he said that he already. He said it. He, he said, said it. Sorry. Ah, oh, you didn't hear. Oussama, you have to explain again. Quinoa, <laughs> a bœuf bourguignon, compote de, de fruits. Yes, exactly. I tasted it already. It's yeah, amazing. It's very good. And I can tell you, he won't make money out of this. Uh, <laughs> he goes shopping in uh, Ile Saint-Louis uh, for the food. <laughs> Just imagine uh, the price of the, the ingredients. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And now let's welcome on stage a guy that created before Super Marmite, which was not like Menu Next Door, but kind of food uh, between friends. And he is starting a new venture. The name is Quotel. Please give a round of applause for Quotel. Okay. Hey, guys. Uh, so my name is Olivier. As uh, Alice introduced me, I'm the guy who got disrupted like five minutes ago by another guy. <laughs> but uh, uh, if you want to discuss, maybe I have some advice too that we, uh, we can share about this business because it's also hard business, unfortunately. But uh, I, I really appreciate the previous pitch. Now I'd like to introduce uh, uh, a new app I made, which is uh, Quodal. Um, Quodal is, uh, so is an app uh, that I made because I, I read a lot of books. Uh, I love reading, but I also have problems when reading is that sometimes you want to uh, take notes about something, you want to save a piece of text, you want to share it, and I notice that it's very hard, when, especially when you read books on paper, to, uh, to uh, use the types of uses that we have on, on, the, um, on the digital world. Um, when, you know, when it's about uh, books on paper, and uh, we can see that p some people use Instagram for that, but it's obviously not made for that. If you want to copy some text uh, on your keyboard, it's a pain in the ass. And that's why uh, we started working on, uh, on a solution to uh, grab text and make it um, uh, usable for digital uses. And we created a Quotal, an app to help you never forget what you read from books on papers, but also on digital books. Uh, so I, I explain how it works now. Uh, so basically, uh, when you're reading a book, uh, you can take a picture of your text. Uh, immediately, uh, our OCR, it's uh, optical character recognition, recognizes the text, and it generates a card. You can, uh, if you want, you can personalize the design uh, by changing colors or fonts. Uh, you can add a source to this card. Source could be the author, the name of the book, etc. And you get uh, some things that you can share on social network or on the cloud, on Evernote, now on Pinterest. And and you can uh, you can also uh, see what other people are reading. And, uh, and get a page where you have all your bookmarks uh, on what you read. Uh, this page is not online yet, but the, the app is already on online. It's on the App Store. It's named Quotal. You can get it on Quotal.co. And if you are an Android user, I'm really sorry. We are not on available yet. But if you send me an email, I take your, your name, and you go into a big Excel file with the name of all the people I will warn uh, as soon as we are ready on Android. Uh, so that's Quotal. Uh, the team, uh, it's these three guys. So I'm the first one. I am a designer. The second one is a mobile developer. He, he, he can work on iOS and Android. And the third one is also important because he's uh, the scientist uh, guy. He has a PhD in image processing. So he's building the technology that's, uh, that's creating our OCR. And uh, it's also a part of the business because uh, we are developing actually two things, an app and uh, OCR as a service. Uh, because we notice that on the market, it's really hard to find uh, easy to use OCR for all apps developers. So as we have to ask something, I just want to say so that if you, want, if you love reading books, I would love to speak with you and, um, and get all your insights about that. And if you are an app developer and you need 
an OCR somewhere in your app, I would also love to, to speak with you. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, two, two, two minutes 40, you speak fast, but it's really well organized, the, like the way you go from who you are, what you're doing, what you like, of the product work, you really shows us the way of how it's gonna work. But the only thing that's missing for me in this is, at the end, I'm, you say I can donate it, but in the first four minutes, I'm like, oh, this does not exist yet. It's a pitch of something that might exist in the next six months. Uh, if you have the product and you already have people using it, show it to us. Uh, show us a guy that tweeted something, made things to with your app. Uh, I yeah. see so many of them on Twitter, people like not bypassing the 140 characters with like pictures of text with yellow, uh, yellow thing on top of it. If you have people really using it, show it, show it. We want to know it exists at the end and not wait for the press release or something. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, you're right, the product is live. Uh, Ségolène Royal used it, I don't know why, uh, recently. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, thank you for the feedback. Um, next time I will show more of the product in action on, on social networks. But, uh, uh, and, and then the OCR as a service and the way the app is built uh, confuses me as, like, say, an investor uh, on knowing what you want to focus about and who you are actually talking to. Uh, so depending whether you talk to me as an investor or to them as future users, I would mention or not mention that you're actually building both. Um, yeah, actually, that's, uh, that's a question that um, prevent me from sleeping in the night. It's the fact that um, uh, I, as a user, my heart goes to quota lap, and uh, as a someone that has the feeling is building something really strong, my, go uh, my heart goes to OCR as a service because our, our OCR rocks, and, uh, and we strongly believe that uh, we have an asset that's meaningful for many things. Uh, by the way, is it a uh, homemade OCR, or is it an API? It's, uh, it, started, it started by something not homemade, yeah. but we are building on top of this, and it's becoming slowly something homemade. Okay, so that, that's, something that it's, that's something strong, and it's like food, le when it's homemade, you should tell it because you are proud of that. And, and for me, it was just a usage of an OCR API, and I'm impressed that you build your own, and this is why you can provide quality. And I think in a good pitch, you should, like, you should never talk about uh, what is made for, unless it provides a very good argument that the quality will be high. Because we all use OCR technology that sucks, and most OCR technologies are not good. And this is why it's very important that you emphasize the fact that you have something that is unmade, incredible, and provide really high accurate uh, value for the people using it. Okay. So what you say is that finally you should focus only on the B2C uh, yeah, pitch. And that's yes. So you really have to focus on the B2C pitch, and because the B2C pitch is amazing, uh, I mean, this is an argument to say it's amazing because everything behind is flawless, the technology has been homemade, and blah, blah, and blah, blah, and blah, blah. And because it's a massive, uh, it's something that a lot of people can use, then the tech guy, then the people will know you as the OCR tool. See what I mean? It's, yeah. a, it's a second... Uh, Effect. It's not, but you you pitch the B two C. Okay. You, yeah. you have to follow what you love. He said this like that. My heart and my money uh, <laughs> pocket <laughs> follow the heart, and that's the way the money pocket uh, will get bigger. Uh, nice pitch. Two speed. A uh, little bit. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, at the end, I, I saw uh, you, you you share on Instagram or not. Um, Instagram doesn't have uh, an API, uh, so uh, all apps that say this share on Instagram, actually they open the native iOS sharing tool that opens Instagram on the picture uh, yeah. page. Which and means uh, what in terms I of results? I, I know how to, to implement that. 
but I don't know how to do a good UX for that. Okay. And, uh, so it's, uh, it's also because one of the points that For me, the, the only use is for this, is for Instagram. Yes, but... For uh, me, personally. Uh, my, my answer... Facebook? Uh, my answer is also that um, this is a, a vision of quarter that is about uh, spreading your content to social media. But another vision is also... Um, is also saying it's maybe in, uh, a, la a lack of uh, humility, but another vision could be saying Evernote is not as good as it could be, and uh, why not trying to be the next Evernote? And uh, the next Evernote sharing is about is uh, is an option, but the heart of the uh, of the uh, of the mission is making your c content uh, indexable and uh, usable for uh, for later use and i think i think that's where we would like to okay. focus our our energy how many people in the room want to test quotel oh. <laughs> uh, how many users do you have uh, i think we are about uh, 8k uh, 8000 users okay anything to add guys great okay great so really thank great you pitch thank you very much Hello everybody. <laughs> Do I start? <laughs> okay. Hello, I'm Francois, I'm CEO of Guacamole, a badass solution to incorporate your startup. As a startup advisor, uh, I have no sound. Okay. As a startup advisor in Silicon Valley with ID Invest or in Ukraine with AB Capital or here in France, I know how painful is legal and administrative tasks for entrepreneurs. I have many talented friends who wanted to create their great startups, but they get stuck at the legal stage. And I have many stories like that. And also my dad was an entrepreneur for all his life long. And he, is, he has always been slowed down by legal complexity. And I dreamed about a solution. And the solution is legal automation. And I met this genius here, here, and here, somewhere hidden. And she helped Amazon to deal with the European legal complexity so they could grow as crazy fast. She's able to write clauses, to write documents that you could be used in the same way in many different countries. Clauses that scale. So me, the startup guy, her, the low genius we met and in a few days we created guacamole and instead of spending three months or six weeks to incorporate a startup it's one week instead of meeting lawyer formalist accountant that are only dealing with their own activity that are not necessary startup experts so they don't have a big picture on your incorporation. We at Guacamole, we put the best startup guys in one room with lawyers, with accountants, with investors, with formalists, with a lot of coffee and a lot of croissant until they build together a validated package of document. And as you don't need any more to go visit the banker, visit the lawyer, visit the formalist, you don't have to produce business plan, estimated income statement. You don't have to produce personal guarantee, CV, payroll, etc., etc. With Guacamole, everything is online. And you can get incorporated from the airport on your way to California. And as you never know how much incorporate your startup is going to cost you, with Guacamole, it's 999, and you've got everything you need for your incorporation. Bylaws, shareholder agreement, legal announcement, registration fees, taxes, and more and more. So let's see how Guacamole could make your life a little bit easier. Let's incorporate a startup with Guacamole. First thing, your startup name and your pitch. Simply write it down 
or copy paste a SlideShare or YouTube link. Then, your team. Selecting roles, CEO, CTO, investor, and allocating capital among founders is as easy as this. You're done. We will only contact you for simple actions like an ID upload, a wire, or an online signature. You control everything with your dashboard. We do the paperwork for you. Enjoy doing what you do best, building an extraordinary product. Congrats! Your startup has been incorporated If you have any question about this demonstration, I mean, I'm available after the event, of course. And on the last three months, we already incorporated 30 startups and it doubles every month. So we will be very glad to incorporate all your startups, guys. Thank you and see you soon on guacamole.com. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, how many users already? How many startups did you already incorporate? Yeah, it's more than 30, I think it's about 35 now. 35? Startup incorporated. Okay. So you start with incorporation? Yeah. Only? Yeah. For But now it's it goes, yeah, tell me. Yes, exactly. I mean, the vision of Guacamole is to do some legal and administrative automation. So we start with incorporation. And in the following months, we will provide more features that startups need in the first years of their life. So everything's going to be just online, one click. Okay. Who, honestly, in this room would rather go uh, to see this guy more than a lawyer? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, it's at, um, I would say, one, one out of three. Hmm? The others, uh, you would rather to go to see your lawyer Okay, so the others, they don't have to incorporate. <laughs> so who has to incorporate and would rather go to see the lawyer? Raise your hand really high. Don't be shy. Okay, it's, it's really nobody. Okay, so you, you can convince. Um, so in terms of pitch, just, just to give some feedback, Usama was saying you should have said, uh, you should have uh, put the video because the demo is, uh, is cool. Uh, on the At the beginning? Uh, yeah. Yeah, if I if I may about that, like you, you, it's not so obvious to have something that produces a wow effect, and if you are in the case of a wow effect, don't wait that everybody sleep before showing it. Like if if you have something like like it's it's really impressive your video. Like you For go, sure. you put your your pièce d'identité, put your capital, get incorporated in a click. Like who doesn't want to start with that? You should show that and say, "Hi, look. Y do you do you believe it exists? It exists. That's the credibility. Yeah. That's who we are. Because you need to to tell people that you are not a, a crazy dude and you have <laughs> a, actually a good lawyer with you that worked for a great company. Mm -hmm. So you should provide social proof, and then you can give every details you want, like mm -hmm. the price and everything. You should do it the other way around, because that's the best way to to catch people and." learn something is that attention span of people is very short and I think like the beginning of your pitch was was boring by context because no one care about incorporation yeah. like you have to understand that you are not sexy yeah. you are coming on on the market that nobody is really about like nobody wake up on the morning and say wow today I will incorporate let's get like, incorporated today yeah, yeah. let's get incorporated <laughs> today so So, so you need to overcome that by telling people, look, you have horrible nightmare about that, but I have something incredible. Take it, and after we talk. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Uh, s same here. Uh, I would really go demo and then social proof, uh, and that way you're going to be explained to, you're going to be able to have a clear message afterwards, which is where do I operate, in which countries, for how much, and why is it great. Uh, Now I'm thinking about the demo again, and I forgot most of the details you sent in the beginning. And if you captivate me in the beginning, 
I'm wondering why is it working and how does it work, then I'm going to remember everything that you explained afterwards because I'm going to yeah. put make the link between the two. And that's something that yeah, sure. most people don't do in the pitch. Most people talk about the problem they're solving before having said what they're actually doing. And usually I take two to three minutes to understand what the company does. And then when sh they say the first thing, I try to remember the rest and I forget the last two minutes. So always stay wha say what you do and then you explain because then uh, we can relate to everything that you actually you are actually doing. Uh, otherwise, you you know your pitch. <laughs> uh, it's been trained. I we can see it. The slides are good. Uh, maybe on the price slide, you put something out so well, that we yeah, yeah well either it's yeah. the price or it's that it's easy or whatever. But the slide is like four lines, and I don't remember anything at the end. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay. So when you catch. Two, you convince. Yeah. And uh, for me, the magic of guacamole is that, of course, you have this uh, magic software, but the reality is that you are the servant of every startup, and That's you go true. with your foot to meet the guy we call the formalist, to, to go to the greffe, mm -hmm. and all these institutions that we don't want to hear uh, about, and you have to talk about these dirty things that actually you love, because you love them, right? I mean, I love uh, that we kill the pain. Yeah. So it has. But no you cost. have um, yeah. to a certain point. Don't pretend that the pain disappears. Yeah. Yeah. The pain, you take it in charge. Yeah. And we, I mean, I really want to know that you will manage and you know these people and you talk their language. It's important for me to trust you. Okay. And if you want us to trust you and know that you're actually behind and actually having the best terms for any startups, show us the people that you incorporated. It's going to be one slide yeah. that might so make us cool. relate and like, oh, like 30 companies. Yeah, I've seen 20 logos. I know two of them. And they're actually the face of one of the guy that incorporated <laughs> that's super happy. With a big smile. Uh, thanking yeah. you, yeah. Sure. Good idea. Yeah. We're good. OK, Thanks. thank you. Bye. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so first, I would like to ask you a few questions to start. Okay, I'm not going to be very ori original because um, the first guy who presented, uh, who introduced his startup already done it. But I would like to know among you guys, how many times have you been on the internet trying to buy the fancy items of your dream, like my Nikes? And um, you happen not to, to be able to find it because it was only available in one country like the United States or Canada or somewhere else. And how many times, you guys, have you been on the internet trying to find these fancy items of your dreams and they were fucking too expensive, sorry. And how many times, you guys, have you been also in touch with your family, friends, and colleagues going out where some, in some countries like the United States, Canada, Asia, but they were not able to find these items because it was a pain, because it was too long. How many times? Well, actually, this is what I call frustration. And that's the point. This is what Deal Trotter is all about. So basically, we are trying to find a way, we, we found a way actually to solve this issue. And what we do is, that we put, we, we get in touch with um, travelers and buyers, all right? So um, we connect buyers and travelers who share the same taste, who share the same taste for food, clothes, um, for many other categories of products. And uh, once a traveler decides or declares that he's traveling abroad, we connect those guys, those travelers, and those buyers. And all the travelers has to do is pick up a parcel that it was shipped to his place where he resides abroad, put it in his luggage, and get back to where he's from. And for that service, he gets paid. All right, you're stuck, guys. <laughs> um, so... Basically, um, this service is all about 
connecting people, connecting travelers, connecting people who look alike, connecting travelers and buyers who share the same tastes. And actually, I'm not the only one who done that, who have done that. My partner, who's right there, raise your hand, don't be shy, all right? Fred is my brother also, I'm very proud. <laughs> and um, um, Fred and I started to imagine this concept like one year ago. We started to write about it, we started to pitch, we started to talk about it also. We built a Facebook page, we have like some um, 1,000 fans on, uh, on Facebook, we are followed by 1,000 or more fans on Instagram, Twitter. And um, we also convinced two other guys, two genius, two tech genius, sorry, two tech genius um, uh, who are named Ernest and Vincent. Uh, one is more focused on uh, an iOS app, and the other one is more focused on, a, um, on the website, on the website building. And uh, today, um, actually, when, I, when we first start to, to talk about this project to Vincent and Ernest, what convinced them to start and to move forward in this adventure was the figures, the key figures of the market. So just imagine that today in France, there are about 36 million people buying on internet. So that could be you, you, and I guess you, because you have very fancy shoes. And uh, the thing is, among those 36 million people, there are also 15 million people who shop abroad. That could be you, that could be you, and also you. And on the other end, what we got is travelers. We have a 15 million people, a growing 15 million people traveling from France to Asia, traveling from France to United States. And the thing is, if you put a ratio, if you make a ratio, it makes almost one traveler for one buyer. So that could be you and you, or you and you, or whoever. So my next question, and to, to finish actually, will be next time you will want to buy something you cannot find in your country, or which is really too expensive, where will you go? Well, I guess this will be Dear Trotter. Thank you. So everything is about you, man. <laughs> so, uh, so f f few very simple rules to remember about pitch. First thing, you never apologize. Okay. Even if you say a fucking word, if you say fucking, you assume it, and you are not a four years old child that when you say fuck, you say sorry. Uh, like, so if you say it, just say it and assume it. If you don't say it, it's fine. You don't need to say fuck. You just need to, when you say it, you just are fine with that. The second thing is that, man, your pitch is so long and so unstructured. Like, I, I wanted to shoot myself. I will be very honest with you. And, and I will tell you why. Because it's an incredible good concept, and you kill it on stage. Because you wanted to tell us every single details. Exactly like if you want to sell me a car, and you will tell me about an engine. And I have no idea of what an engine is about. Or if you want to sell me a house and you will talk about when did you, how did you build the electricity in the house. Like, and, and you know, I'm very close to your concept because I was born in a country where that is done by everyone. It's called Badakshi. Like in Lebanon, anyone traveling will always tell his friend Badakshi. Badakshi means, do you need something with me? And every time you travel, you have maybe 50 or 60 kilos of items country from countries because everyone in Lebanon is in import-export at some point. At least. So, <laughs> so, like, if you want to tell the story, it's very easy. Like, start with the frustration, it was not a bad start, and tell the kind of concept that people want, and just tell how it works. And that's it. You don't need all the details you said. You, you can do it in one minute. There is so many things that everybody in this room wants to buy, and there is no way to access it, because it's in a very limited quantity. You have enough friends in your networks that are ready to provide back everything they buy, and to, in exchange of a commission, they will be ready to bring something for you. And all of the items around the world will become very accessible for you and very easy. That's it. 
You see, like you you don't need to go in like very deep story. And it's not it's not your fault. It's like because most of people telling about concept always start. And also, what was missing is that when you told this very easy concept, you spend your five minutes talking about the concept. Tell us what did you bring? Like even if you did not bring anything because it's not launch, just fake it. Say, oh, my brother bring his incredible shirt from whatever in Australia, and, and that guy bring his sneakers from I don't know where. And, 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 take, and, and put picture and make people leave your concept because you need to give example of things that you will find only in certain kind of place. And if you do that, I'm sure a lot of people will be ready to, to join your concept. All right, got it. Next time I will. Um, same, you lost me. Uh, and I don't even remember the name of the company in the end, uh, which is, uh, if it's frustration, uh, but I, I, there is nothing I can relate to, there is nothing tangible for me. It's like you come, you start with a, a pain that we all understand, uh, and by the way, you do it in a very nice way and you engage the audience and people want to like you, but then you want also people to like what you're actually doing. And I can understand the problem and who might bring me anything. Uh, relate to real examples. Uh, don't tell us about all the vanity metrics you have, which are a thousand likes on Instagram. Uh, either it's a real community, it's really amazing, and then you tell about it because it's like the engine of, what, of how it works. If it's a Facebook group of 40K people where you ask, can someone bring me an iPhone from the US and in the five minutes it works, then you have to tell about the community. If it's just followers on Twitter, it doesn't bring anything to the concept. Uh, then the figures you really need to talk about are thousands of people, thousands of items have been brought from ear, 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 and ear. And actually this that was uh, only available in Paris in June was available in Tokyo in, uh, in April and someone got it two months before. So examples of either it comes earlier, either it comes as better price or either it just comes. Uh, make us relate to it so at the end we know that we go on frustration.com or whatever and it works. Um, and w on what is said... Dealtrotter.com <laughs> And uh, we said about... Is it live? Not yet. Okay. Then then say it. Like, we're going to be live on this day. You can register here. We have thousands of people waiting. Uh, and, w and what you said about the engine is like the iOS dev and Android, we don't care. We just want it to work. Uh, just... Tell us it's live in two weeks and it's going to work like this, 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 this. Okay. If you are not launch and if we can give you a little bit of launching advice, launching something like that is like launching a space rocket. It's so complicated. So many countries, blah, blah, blah. And you will end up launching nothing. Like, you know, it's happened so many times that entrepreneurs wanting to do everything end up by doing nothing. Like, it's so common pattern. So focus on a very small community that needs something from some specific place. For example, uh, we, we have one of our ex-employees that is totally crazy about Japanese manga. And he never finds them. He asks his friend to bring manga when they are in Japan. They do a group together of who will be in Japan next, and they will bring manga in their suitcase. Start with something as small as that and just provide them the best experience ever. And from that, you can grow in community and community. For example, there is very foodie community that uh, wants to eat some very specific things from some very specific place. And, and you can pick. And when you will have pick enough community, providing enough value to enough group, you will be ready to launch it to the world. But don't launch it on the first thing frustration.com, anything you want, anywhere, and people will be like, oh, yeah, I don't know, yeah, maybe, like, can you bring me a big toddler run? Like, it, it, will be, it, will be, it will be weird. Yeah, it's the same reason no one ever leaves Facebook to another social network. It, when you come and it's empty, it really sucks. So if you launch for everything, it's going to be so disappointing for so many people. Uh, if you focus on something, people just, oh, no, they just do manga, I'm not going to ask. But uh, for everyone that likes manga, it's going to be perfect. Yeah, but obviously, you're going to start with basket because you're fond of basket and you should start with what Definitely. you're fond of. 
Uh, everything has been said, just want to add that your energy is amazing and that's the most important because all the rest can be, you can work on. And you got excited and we could see you were excited. And I met you the last time at uh, the last pitch, Don't Kill My Vibe. And you came and you said, I want to pitch on stage. And, and I felt already that you were totally engaged in this project. And we can feel it in the room that you are fond of the, what you're doing. The problem is that you got fooled by, by this excitement. Okay, so you make me think about, like you were almost like a one-man show on stage, like you, 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 you could sing like, uh, and uh, you make me feel with the slides, because the slides, they have nothing uh, apart from a landscape. <laughs> it's like, you know, at the concert of Jay-Z, like, the <laughs> like just uh, for uh, ornamentation, you know, like Actually, decoration slides. Actually, this is all Aisha's fault. She told me to make a show. <laughs> no, and, and, and that's your responsibility, man. But the thing is that you, you made me even more think about the guy who is pretending to do a business like when, when they mimic the business because they see it from far, rather than talking about the experience, about these little people coming and coming back uh, to bring the, the, the items. And you, you, you mimic the business, like Jay-Z mimicking when he presented that on stage, you know, like it was a joke, this thing. Like uh, every star on stage uh, signing a paper uh, with a Madonna, uh, with a Daft Punk, uh, step by step, like uh, the big setup. Uh, nobody understood what is Tidal uh, and still not understand that actually. So don't be fooled by this kind of vision of business, please. Uh, bring exactly what you're doing here, you know? Like talk about what it, what it takes to go abroad, to connect the people, how much money you can make, and actually you connect the people who are passionate about the same thing, and this is what is amazing. So you have the most important, the passion. You can easily communicate it. I totally follow you if, I, if you tell me that you're gonna engage 100% of your time in this market, okay? So just show, if you have a, a, a Facebook page, put it here. If you have uh, your own uh, selection of items, put it here, everything, okay? Okay. Uh, any question in the room? Yeah. Um, imagine uh, you are limited uh, in terms of uh, kilos in your uh, luggage. Mm -hmm. uh, what about bringing a heavy, uh, if, if I have to pay more, if the item is heavy? No, actually you don't have to pay uh, some, some more. Um, the thing is, when the traveler decides to bring back some stuff for a buyer, he also um, he also marks uh, on our website the quantity and the size of the parcel is able to carry. So that that's how it works. Uh, so basically, if you are able to carry like a, a pair of sneakers or just an iPhone or just uh, uh, some glasses, you just nut it down. Who liked the guy? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>
So you turned your Wi-Fi password to uh, a little um, QR code. L'achat QR code était connecté au Wi-Fi. Ton pote peut aussi cliquer sur Wi-Fi Share. Et là, tous ceux qui ont Wi-Fi autour de toi reçoivent une notification. Ils acceptent et sont connectés automatiquement. Ça s'appelle Wi-Fi, c'est easy, c'est Wi-Fi. So how it works? It's really simple. You click on uh, this but button and you enter your um, your um, Wi-Fi network SSID and your Wi-Fi password only one time, and then you click on save and you have your Wi-Fi QR code. Uh, the project uh, progress. Uh, today we put uh, some uh, Wi-Fi stickers into restaurants, bars, shops, and everywhere where. Um, Customer uh, needs Wi-Fi, so we've got uh, 16 uh, partners, 16 restaurants, and a partnerships with uh, L'Orange Bleu, who is a gym uh, group. Uh, the team, me myself, I'm 22 years old. I am a web designer, and I'm in uh, third year at EDC Paris, a business school. My friend, with, uh, Nabil, uh, who is uh, focused on marketing and uh, business strategy, further at EDC Paris too. Thanks for your attention. There are a lot of great things in the pitch. The demo is one of them. Uh, but the overall thing needs should be a little more structured. Uh, For example, at the end, you tell me who your clients are, and in the beginning, all the examples you take are at the opposite. Like, if you sell to a restaurant and the pain is me going to a restaurant, having to ask to the waiter what the Wi-Fi is, and he comes with, like, he comes if he comes, uh, with a paper, with a phone number or something, I understand that it's a pain, and then I can relate to who your clients are going to be and relate to the example. It's not the same at all that giving the password to people at the party or And same, like I was like, I'm not going to install all this and set it up for one party. But if you're a restaurant, it's recurrent use, and actually it makes sense. So the examples you of the problem you put should be related to who you actually sell in the end. Uh, on the other side, uh, don't put slides with like problem, solution, team. Like make it flow. It just needs to be a story. Uh, you start uh, with all the issues you have. You show that you have clients in restaurants. You show how easy it is for everyone. And then you say who, who you are and how good you are uh, and why it actually works. Um, and I was wondering whether you could have done a demo uh, with our Wi-Fi that could also work uh, in the beginning. I mean, I'm, sure, I'm sure you can do it, of course. Uh, but like, at least if then ask to be first on the pitches. So <laughs> ask to at least to say you scan this QR code and it's going to be connected to Wi-Fi. And in the end, you just say, oh, and by the way, that was me. I don't know. Try to, to put it. So I, I just didn't get it in that. Oh, just first on the pitch, uh, it looks uh, useful, obviously. Uh, but uh, you, you, you give it in a very um, conformist or... or You know, weird way. You should tell us the story of the use case. Not be. I, I felt you were shy a little bit. It's okay. Uh, English is uh, is okay. Uh, I, I heard too many hum hum all the time, and this can be a bit uh, boring when you're hearing this. Um, you look too much at the slide. So never look at the slide. And I know it's, again, I think of uh, the, the people when they are shy, they look because it's easier to give the back to the audience uh, to have a little bit of uh, quiet for a little time. I, I totally get it. In your story, in your slides, uh, when you, so he said it never put the, the problem equals blah, blah. You directly put your sentence. Uh, your grandma. When you say, you remember this moment when you are with your grandma and you have to give her the code, don't tell this. Say, or, or the humoristic effect would be more direct if you say, have you ever tried to do a petit Q, grand Y, deux, petit J, W. We all have this under the, and we know 
how it's uh, impossible to, to, to give. Um, I love the GIF, so this is cool. Uh, you can, I mean, it, it, it's uh, original. Not everyone put GIFs in the presentation, but in the demo, I didn't get it because I would love to have it in my house. <laughs> I'm not able to change a password. I'm not a real geek. <laughs> so I, I didn't get how it works exactly. Uh, when you enter the name of your box, your Wi-Fi network, your password. Uh, you have to give it once. Once. Okay. Only once time. Okay. And then you, and then you distribute it. Exactly. How do you distribute it? By uh, text? No. The, the QR code is created. And you have to give it to? Yes. And uh, your friend go in scan and it scan your phone. And I cannot uh, extend, send them by, by texto? Yes, yes, you of can. Of course I can. You click on it. And okay. uh, there okay, is okay, a okay, message, okay, Facebook, okay, okay. Uh, everything. Easy, easy. Yes. Easy. And easy? Well, yeah, cool, cool reference. <laughs> 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 and otherwise, I mean, that's it for me. Uh, yeah, we, we basically said everything. Uh, if I, as a, one day in my life I was shy, so I understand. Uh, and I, I, I learned something is that one of the ways to be comfortable on stage is mm. to to be comfortable with the people. Mm. Like we, we like there is only friends here. So so if you are at home, like how do you feel? And and if I can give an advice to any shy people, just just learn to remember feelings. Like think about a feeling that you really love, and before getting on stage, just think about that feeling very deeply, and everything will flow. Like that's that's one of the way you you get, and the second way, where when we are nervous like you on stage, one of the best ways to practice, practice and practice. So just give random pitch to people, uh, take yourself out and pitch to your people, and you will see very fast you will lose that because because you lose a lot of effect on on your slide because you are a bit stressed and because you are a bit stressed you are a bit stressful, and 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 that's a shame for. For for password management now on the business side, uh, it's it's quite interesting. It's uh, I think it's an it it will be really hard to scale, really hard to install. I c I can figure out what can be the business opportunity because maybe by installing Wi-Fi to restaurant after you can provide other services, mm -hmm. you can also get a huge database of user of where users are because you know where they connect. Mm -hmm because you have a single app. Mm -hmm. So that, that's quite a neat business model. Like if you know the consumption of everyone just by targeting which Wi-Fi they connect to. So like, but maybe one thing should be that you can be a little bit more radical and you can install that in place uh, much faster without the consent mm -hmm. of, of the people. Like maybe that's one of the way you can, you can do it. You can, come in restaurant, say you are the technician and there is a new offer from, o from Orange oh, yeah. to, to install that much faster. And you tell him like it's wheezy, it's, it's, you just, it's, it's free for you, like we just install it and you put that on, on your ticket or you put that on the door. Don't hesitate Why to not? do that because you are in a game where you need to install as many places as possible, as fast as possible, and you are too slow. Because by definition in this kind of business, you are always too slow. Like y think about like what y what are the radical way where you can put yourself and start one thousand business in a week, two thousand business in a week. Like can you give points to people that they get free drinks in exchange of installing that and convincing their coffee to install it? Uh, can you take everyone in that room and tell them that if their favorite bar is on Wheezy this week, they will get X Y Z? Can you like can you ask every grandma to go and complain? In, in in shop and say uh, and and take a video and put it online and say grandma are for wheezy because they need Wi-Fi in restaurant like you see that's maybe a viral video and that's only f five stupid ideas in five seconds so you need to put yourself down on a chair and think about 1,000 ID with only one obsession installing more place every week and go much faster you don't need agreement you don't need money you don't need anything you just need that it's spread everywhere. And you get a lot of data, and from that you can build a business. Thank you. Thank you.
Attends, wait, sorry. Uh, just, uh, is there any question in the room? Yes, I forget it. Yes. Ah, the IT guy, come on. <laughs> cool idea. How do you get paid? Uh, when uh, uh, we have enough uh, data, no, enough uh, users, ah. we will put some uh, suggestions. Ah. Uh, for example, if you are in a coffee and you just um, connect it to the Wi-Fi, we are gonna um, we push, gonna push uh, some no notif uh, in order to download the l'équipe, you know? Uh, j just, j just something like uh, th that's the most horrible business concept ever. Okay, no, but I, I will tell you that because I, I was thinking you are a nice guy, and now you want to go in my intimate time with my coffee and no. suggest me things. You, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> like please, please stay out of the line. Like you have thousands of business models. When, when people ask you this kind of question, you should tell the truth. I have no fucking ID. And I'm fine. No, like, you know, like, I, I, I don't know why entrepreneurs always lie. Like, it's something that's really fascinating me personally, is that they, they know that the answer is, I don't know, and they are like, yeah, so the business model is that <laughs> I will suggest cappuccino <laughs> when you will be, like, like, forget it, man. You have no idea, you are doing a cool project, put that in every single coffee and something will emerge. And if you don't know, just tell the truth. Like, there is no shame of telling people like, who is this big guy asking you about business model? What are you doing, man? Like, <laughs> who are you to ask that? So, so just always focus on the truth. Like, you don't, like, pitching is not about lying. You know, one of them complain about the families a lot. Oh, yeah, that guy is all bullshit, blah, 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 story thing. That, there is a difference between storytelling and lying. Storytelling is about giving the best version of what you are doing so people understand and connect emotionally with you. That's storytelling. Lying because you have no idea of what you are saying and just saying something to reply something, that's not good. Because you cannot look good. Because if you are talking to someone that don't know what you are talking about, it will not get any value of, of what you are saying. And if you are talking with someone that knows what you are talking about, like what that guy was saying, oh my God, the guy he will negotiate every horrible deal with every single coffee, it will be a nightmare. And we know that because we have thousands of business in restaurants, things like that. We see patterns, we see business model. Mm. So focus first on your product and things will flow. Okay. Other questions? Why not? So the idea of intrusion, again. <laughs> <laughs> Like the beggar in the market, you know? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much. It was a good time. Now, stay here. Every pitcher on stage. Every pitcher on stage. And you have to choose. You have to choose. Who is your favorite? Come on. Come on. So I will count up to three. And I will give, and I, come on guys, come on here, in the front, in the front. So, each guy will remind me their name, but the startup name. Give love to everybody, but keep the hardcore love to one person, meaning a lot of noise, okay? So, your name again, the startup. Okay, so I will say one, two, three, deal trotter, and you, no, you stay here, it's not time yet. But within 10 minutes, you have to see the winner. Uh, one, two, three, Dill Trotter! Yeah. That's okay. One, two, three, Guacamole! Yeah. Attends, le nom c'est quoi déjà? Rizzi. Non, le start-up. One, two, three, Rizzi! Yeah. One, two, three, money next door. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, quartel.
OK, just uh, let's do the demi-finale. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, it won't be you. And I'm hesitating between the three of you. So just come, just come. OK, so th the three of you. So now you choose between one, two, three, OK? It's one, two, three, OK? So, one, two, three, Wizzy! Yeah. One, two, three, Menu next door. One, two, three, Quattel. Okay, obviously, but you don't need a fucking immatriculation. And you choose... Okay, so first, uh, appreciate your victory, man. Yes, thank you. And let's go uh, eat uh, Boeuf Bourguignon on Friday at uh, Usama's house. And now you choose who do you want to offer? Who needs, uh, who needs immatriculation, basically, among you guys? You? You don't? Okay. So you win immatriculation! Incorporation, we say. Thank you, everybody.